What's going on guys? It's your boy Beats Bash back at it again with another banger of a video and today I have an awesome black red sacrifice Duskmorn draft to showcase for you guys and I have to say this is currently my favorite deck to draft in the format because it just feels like the deck provides the pilot with a lot of different lines of play and overall just complex levels of skill expression in the game mechanics portion and I am just loving it. So I hope you guys enjoy the games, enjoy the draft, and without further ado, let's get into the goo. Alright, welcome back to another Duskmorn draft on the channel and our rare today is split up. This is one we have seen quite a bit. And I feel like this card is good in just about every deck, maybe a little bit better in an aggressive deck, but you're almost always guaranteed a two for one. So it is a good place to start. And to follow that up, we see a Waltz of Rage. I've had this card a couple times before, but I've never actually put it in my deck because I think you really need to have um, higher power creatures than your opponent, which typically means you're probably going to be playing a green deck. Um, and I just haven't gotten to do that while also possessing this card yet. Other than that, I guess there is Vile Mutilator, which I'm not too fond of committing to early. Trial of Agony, which is good in some red decks, but not all. And then at common, I guess there's a Meat Locker Drowned Diner. Um, and if you just want to be really safe, I guess you could take Glimmer Light here. I think I'm just going to stick to picking the most powerful card in this pack, which is the Waltz of Rage. We may not end up playing it, but... I think in this format, it's in your best interest to just play around the most powerful cards you're seeing early in the draft and kind of just build off of that. Ooh, there are some good cards in here. So the rare was taken, but there is a Defiant Survivor, which is fine. There's a Patchwork Beastie, which is great and has performed very well with me. And there's also a Disturbing Mirth, which is one that I think goes way too late for how good it is. I might actually just take this here. The potential that if we end up red black uh, would be very, very nice with this Waltz of Rage. Okay, well, there is a popular Egotist. This card is kind of like a little bit worse version of the um, red black gold card that lets you sack stuff. But this one does get indestructible, so it has a little bit of built-in protection, and I think that's pretty decent. It's going to be between that and the Clockwork Percussionist. I do really like Clockwork Percussionist, and I think these cards are kind of on the same power level. I think I'm going to go with the Percussionist here, just because this leaves us more open to moving into a different space, maybe red-white, right? Okay, well, I'm hoping to just look to build more off of um, red in this pack, so that we have a good chance of getting the Waltz of Rage in our deck. And there is one of the better red commons, MVS. This card is just good in pretty much any red deck, and... I think really good as long as you are the aggressor, so I'm probably going to take that here. There's some other cards of interest, but this is the one that's most likely to make our deck, and I don't think it's too much worse than the others. Okay, so it looks like white seems to be drying up, which makes me feel like this split up is probably not going to make our deck. The dream to go red-black is still somewhat alive. There's a derelict attic and a widow's walk as well as Winter's Intervention. I think I'm just going to go with the Winter's Intervention here. I mean, I'm not really missing out on a lot in this pack, and I really just haven't felt like Widow's Walk is really worth it. Yeah, let's go with the Winter's Intervention. Not always good, but if your opponent is low to the ground aggro, it can be very, very nice. Okay, there is an Innocuous Rat. This card is very good in red-black. I think this card is probably best suited in the red black deck because you're going to be able to get sacrifice value out of it uh 2x which is really nice with stuff like disturbing mirth or the red black gold card slash the um popular egotist that we saw before things are kind of winding down but there is a ragged playmate i don't mind playing this card in a red black deck you're not going to have as many creatures that are two power or less as a red white deck maybe but i think it is just a fine card to play in any aggro deck and that is a good place for us to pick it up at crackling slasher i think you just never want to put in your deck fear of the dark as well like this card is not that great there's a blue black land but i don't know that you really want to be splashing you know what i'm going to take the land because i don't think i want to put any of these cards in my deck Ooh, there's another innocuous rat pick 10 well that is exactly what we'd like to see hopefully we can get a couple more sacrifice payoffs in pack number two okay a third one all right well i guess i'm down i don't know if we'll play three it's really going to depend on how many payoffs we get and then given to violence is okay but i think the red combat tricks are just better to put in the deck 
I don't think in a deck like this you want a chandelier, but this is definitely a card to look out for because it's really good in green decks, just as a way to not deck out. All right, so we've pretty much solidified ourselves in red black after pack one, and let's hope to get some more sacrifice synergies going here. Our rare here is Gloom Lake Verge, probably not something we're going to be using here, but there is another Disturbing Mirth, and I think I'm just going to cling on to this. I think you could make an argument that maybe we take this Scorching Dragonfire instead and hope for this card to wheel, because it doesn't seem like there's another red-black drafter in the pod, but I think this card is just too premium for us to let go, especially after getting three rat. Like, the synergy is just so high there, so I, I think I gotta take this. It's unfortunate I'm leaving the Dragonfire in the pack. Okay, wow. This pack is really good for a green player, but it's not looking like that is gonna be us. There is a Conductive Machete, though, which... I think is best suited in a red-green manifest deck, but I think it's completely fine here because it does give us something to be able to sacrifice, and that's good enough for me. Okay, there is a Razorkin Horde Caller. I've actually found this card to be pretty, pretty good in almost any red deck, to be honest. Outside of the red-blue deck, uh, I think this card is just great in any aggressive red deck. It also gives us a creature that is... Um, a little bit higher power to use with the Waltz of Rage, which could be pretty nice. And the tokens can come up for Sacrifice Fodder, so let's lock that in here. Things are looking pretty good. Oh my gosh, there's a Kaido. I mean, I don't know that you really want to splash Kaido. Like, this card was good whenever I splashed it before, but it was in a control deck. Because typically the play line with this card is you do minus two, stun something down, then you just keep plus one-ing, and the plus one just does nothing. Um, because there are no ninjas in this set outside of a rare. And I think since we're not playing a control deck, we're going to go with Piggy Bank here. This is just a premium 2-drop in the format, and it gives us a little bit of additional value if we're able to sacrifice it as well. So that is very, very nice for us to get here. Oh my gosh, and we get a Sawblade Skin Ripper. That is exactly what we were looking for here. The only thing about the red-black deck is that there are not a lot of good sacrifice synergies in the format, and you really need at least like three or four of them to have like a coherent um, synergistic deck, which just gives you a higher chance of going 3-0 in this archetype overall. There's also a Final Vengeance, which is one of the other cards that lets you sack, but I think this card is just way better, and we're super excited to see it here. That is actually our first three drop, so that's important to note. Ooh, okay, there's a turn inside out, pick six. I mean, that's exactly at the point where I'd like to pick up this card. This card's really nice in this deck because, uh, you know, if we want to sack something, we can just pay one mana, get another body, and we can trade up. So that's exactly what we are looking for here. Okay, so there's a Fanatic of Harrowing, and there's a Vicious Clown. I don't think that Vicious Clown is that great in a red-black deck, but with the cards we've drafted so far, we actually have quite a few cards that are... Um, two power or less with the three rat and the ragged playmate and the percussionist to where I think I can justify picking this up here and Bale Merc Leech I just don't think is something you want to have in your deck. Okay, there is another winter's intervention I mean obviously just not the premium removal spell in this deck But it can be good against the aggro matchups seeing a wildfire wicker folk pick nine is Absolutely insane. I'm surprised to see that card go this late. Uh, I'll just go with the friendly teddy I don't think we're playing any of these cards and we'll pick up the Vile Mutilator here. I, I don't think it's ever making our deck, though. Okay, we'll get this Dual Land, actually. You know, if, if we want to splash a green card, we definitely could. Or a white card. We got the lands for it. Grab the Prize has been one that I just don't think you really want to ever play. I guess if you need a 23rd card and you pivoted late, you could throw it in. But I haven't really seen a reason to do that. It's just a worse Disturbing Mirth. All right, well, we have 17 pretty premium cards going into pack three. Let's hope that this pack does us justice. Oh my gosh, and there are two rares that are great for our deck. Screaming Nemesis is a hasty boy, and whenever it takes damage, it deals that much damage to any other target, and if you hit the opponent, they can no longer heal, which is great. There's also a Chainsaw. I mean, this is a toss-up. I think I'm more interested in the Screaming Nemesis, but Chainsaw is good too. I just think that this card is really important for our curve at this point, so I'm gonna go Screaming Nemesis. This pack does not look as great for us. There's a Raging Furnace, which I actually don't mind playing because, you know, if you draw this early and you're able to kill something, then we could sack it later, which wouldn't be terrible. But there's also a fear of being hunted, which I wouldn't mind. I mean, I think this card is just great overall. It's also another higher power creature to use with Waltz of Rage. 
So I think this card's just more synergistic with our overall game plan, but I wouldn't be upset taking this Roaring Furnace. It's just a bad top deck late in the game, right? Yeah, we're gonna go with the Fear of Being Hunted. Okay, really looking to pick up some removal here. Well, there is a Midnight Mayhem, and you know, I might actually be interested in splashing that. Uh, that, is, that is really good here. I mean, I do have a Red White Land. My only issue is there's also a Final Vengeance, and this card's just too synergistic with our deck. I don't mind Killer's Mask either. I think this card is completely fine, but I kind of want to prioritize some, like, legitimate spot removal. This card's just really good with our deck, and I think I got to prioritize it. Ooh, okay, there is another Clockwork Percussionist. That is great, and it is a good pick to follow up the Final Vengeance because there's an obvious synergy there. There's also a Glimmer Light, which I do not hate because it gives you another object to sacrifice and just buff up creatures later in the game. And I don't really think there's anything we are interested in here. I'm not really a fan of Fanatic of Harrowing. I mean, this is good if you're a Delirium deck, but like, that's not what we're trying to do. We didn't get any copies of Hand That Feeds, which is really unfortunate. I, I don't think I'm going to play a Vicious Clown either, but I'll take it. Okay, there's another Final Vengeance. That's good. Would like to get at least, you know, one more two drop here, ideally, though. Kind of wish I speculated on that um, Scurry of Gremlins or whatever it is, the Gremlin card, because that would have just been so good in our deck, but I didn't know I was going to get another Final Vengeance, and our removal is just kind of lacking for big threats. But there is a Ragged Playmate, which is good. That's going to give us six two drops, which is great. There is an Arabella, and I mean, like, I have a Red White Land. And I don't think I want a third Winner's Intervention. I don't think that card's that great. I'll take the Red Black Land. Maybe we'll throw it in there. There's a Saw. I don't know if I really want to play a Saw. I've seen some people use it, and it can turn on Sacrifice uh, Synergies, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, there is a Let's Play a Game. I think this is okay in the sideboard. It may actually come up where our opponent has, like, a bunch of weenies, and we'll throw it in, but probably not for the main deck. And that's going to be the draft here. It doesn't look like we're going to be getting anything else. And I'm definitely not splashing a blue card, I can tell you that. The chandeliers are all coming to us at once. Oh no, the crackling slasher made it back to us without our consent. All right, well, we ended up with a pretty balanced looking red-black sacrifice deck. I have seen better versions of this deck, but it looks more closer to the optimized side of the spectrum than not. And we've got a couple cool cards in here. We have a Walt of Rage, which isn't the best, but as long as we don't go against someone who's playing like a big green deck, it can definitely draw us a bunch of cards with all of our stuff that um, triggers on death. We have a Screaming Nemesis, of course, two Disturbing Mirth, and a Sawblade Skin Ripper, as well as the Conductive Machete. And I actually decided to go down to 16 lands here because our average CMC is 2.4. For that reason, I decided to add in a copy of Saw because I just want to try this card out, and it seems like if there's ever a reason to play this card, this might be the deck to do it, because we have Innocuous Rat, which gives us a benefit on sack. We have the Clockwork Percussionist, and then we also have the Disturbing Mirth. So that's like nine things that really want to be sacrificed, and I'm interested to see how this will play out. Maybe we'll be happier that we put it in than not, because we can just continue drawing cards in order to not run out of resources, which is is what you're really hoping to do in an aggro deck like this. So let's go ahead and hop into these games. All right, let's get it. Where are all my rack sack homies at? This is for you. Starting off on the play here. Um, yeah, this just seems really, really bad. I don't think you're looking to have a five land hand with an average CMC of 2.4. So let's hope for something better. Uh, this seems quite a bit better. Okay, cool. I mean, we are on the play, so maybe I want the Innocuous Rat more than the Winter. I'm not really sure. Eh, I think I'll put back one Rat. Start off with the Red Black Land here. I think it could have been fair to put back the Land as well, but I really want to hit the Skin Ripper. Okay, we draw a Rat anyway. For some reason, I thought we were starting off on the play, but I guess we aren't. Okay, he's going with a Bear Trap. Sure. Well, I mean, if you want to Bear Trap my Rat, I'd really appreciate that. But I feel like you're going to bear trap my Skin Ripper, which is really kind of messed up, my guy. Let's go in here. Drop down another rat. Hopefully, he plays something with two power or less here. And he's just going to pass. Okay, that's pretty good for us. Well, I think I have to do this at that point. He only has two lands. I would have been in such a better position if I would have just dropped down the Skin Ripper had I known he only has two lands. Do not draw another one, sir. Please. Oh my gosh, he drew it, and now he can kill my Skin Ripper. That's so sad. 
Had we played it last turn, we would be in such a good position because I could respond by sacking, but that is not the case, neither here nor there. Hopefully I can Winner's Intervention at least something. Okay, he's for recycling, sure. Looks like he's playing green-blue. Wow, he's just passing again. I need to draw some gas. Please give us some gas. No, if I had a land, this would be so great. Please flash something in. Okay, great. You're flashing something in. I love that, man. I love that for you, man. Well, I think I actually am going to save the final vengeance. Maybe I can get another one off on his turn. Oh, that was a screaming nemesis. So he's splashing red. Yeah, this was not a great start for us by any means. I should have just spent my three mana. For all the viewers at home, remember to spend your mana on time. I don't really like Winter's Intervention in that, to be honest. Land here? Okay, we get that guy. That's like a real card, I guess. There's no one green instant that I know of. Well, if he doesn't kill our fear of being hunted, we're going to be able to push through for some damage with our final vengeance here. Yeah, I love final vengeance in the right deck. If you have the stuff if you have the stuff to support it, it might just be the best piece of interaction in the format. The most efficient that is. Okay. So, we don't know if this is a creature. But he's going to add back a land. That's interesting. I guess if he plays another creature, I final vengeance it. And then I winter's intervention the other. And he's going to go meat locker. Okay. Well, hopefully we get a land here. It's a land. We're online, baby. Let's go. Let's go for the horde collar. And everybody get in there. Would you like to block the four or the one and give me a card? Okay, give me a card. Nice. We love a good card this time of year. Man, if Winter's Intervention could deal damage to an opponent, it would be so much better. Well, I got two lands out of the way, so there's something to be said about that. I don't think he can afford to take a turn off and use the Drowned Diner here, which is good. Flesh Burrower, okay. That is a good Winter's Intervention target, if I've ever seen one myself. Ooh, and a turn inside out. Wow, that was a huge top deck here. So, I guess we're just going to go ahead and do this. That guy is Death Touch, so we got to get him out of here ASAP, Rocky. And then I guess I will go ahead and Final Vengeance this. I should have done that first, but whatever. And this should be game if he doesn't have anything. Okay, cool. Let's go. All right, well, that worked out better than expected, even though we stumbled. Hopefully, we can get a decent hand here. He is mulling, though, so that is good for us. Ooh, this hand is insane. Yeah, this hand is great. Um, we know that Winner's Intervention is really good versus him. Considering I have a tapped land, maybe I'm interested in just putting back the Percussionist. Nah, I should probably put back the MVS. That's probably the safest thing to do here. Okay, we get another land. Yeah, I gotta play this to get my rat out. Ooh, and we get a Disturbing Mirth. That's great. So now I can go with the rat here. No counter spell, sir? Okay, he is land cycling. Awesome. Well, that's a good sign for us. Hopefully, we can draw into, like, a final vengeance off this. Oh, I have to answer that ASAP. Yeah, I gotta get that out of here. That card's just too good. Well, I know one thing. His Zamone isn't going to uh, proc next turn, so I don't have to be worried about that. Get him for our one free damage. Sweet. It would be nice to play this, but I think I just got a Disturbing Mirth, right? Maybe I should just drop the Skin Ripper and develop. Yeah, I'm just gonna get this out, I think. Hopefully, he doesn't have, like, the Moldering Gem to ramp here. That would be gross. Sure. If he has the Moldering Gem weight room, I'm gonna really hate myself. Okay, he has a Cautious Survivor. That is a lot better for us than what I thought was gonna happen. I will just be able to pop his Zimone for free since I'm gonna do a sack play here. So, let's go ahead and do this. Sack the Rat. See what we get. Draw two. And do I want this or this? This might actually be better here, surprisingly. I'll just play that. So this kills his Zimone during the end step. I could just sack the Disturbing Mirth. 
I highly doubt he's gonna block my skin ripper, right? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna attack. Fuck, that was kind of bad for us. Yeah, I just missed out on value. That was kind of stupid. Fuck me. Well, that was really bad for us. I don't know why I did that. I could have just killed a Zimone. I thought I could sneak in three damage, but we didn't really need to. And he has a conductive machete. Well, I need to get a final vengeance here. Sure. Piggy bank. That's not great. If I flip this, he has to block it. Well, that's just a 2-2. Two -two. That's not even great. Well, we'll trade, I guess. Hopefully that misplay by me does not lose us the game. Oh, it was a sla slavering brain snapper. That was insane for him. That was insane. Well, we need to top deck some heat. Because he can probably outvalue us. Ooh, and he just exiled that. Wow. Yeah, we'd be in such a better position if I didn't mess up there with the skin ripper. No, that's so bad. I'm going to play the word caller and the percussionist. I'm going to attack with this to draw a card. And then get a 1-1, which chumps. Waltz of Rage. Okay, we get Disturbing Mirth. Wow, that is broken. Wow, that was literally the best thing we could have had. I fucking knew it. Oh. That was like the one thing that might be able to bring us back. He does not have Trample, so I can just um, chump with the 1-1, which isn't terrible. And we've got 7 mana, so there's a lot of things we can do. Will he attack with both? He's just going to pass. Okay, cool. Well, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Yeah, this just seems insane. We're going to get to draw two cards and Manifest Dread if he doesn't have a counter. No counter. Awesome. Man, I'd be getting so much value if I kept that Skin Ripper. Why? Okay, that kills his dude. Sure. We get a Ragged Playmate. That can push through damage. Play out this. Let's kill that guy. And then let's play this Rat. And just pass here. Hope he doesn't have an instant speed answer. Okay, he's manifesting dread. So he's going to get to draw a card, which is really sad. Man, this card's just so good. And I threw so hard. It'd be a locked-in game. Why? We still have the Waltz of Rage, though. So if he doesn't kill our Horde Caller, we could just, like, draw a bunch of cards and say, fuck you, buddy. Final Vengeance would be pretty good, too. Ooh, the Crypt Inspector. That's insane if this card is flippable. Ooh, okay, that's nice. That's hella nice. And we can keep getting in for the unblockable. Okay. Target that, dude. Well, I think I just stacked the Disturbing Mirth. The question is, what is the best card here? It's tough. Because what if this card is just insane? I kind of just like passing here and seeing what he's flipping. But if he does flip and he gets this paranormal analyst effect, yeah, that'd just be gross. Uh, I guess I should just do it while I can. We got rid of two swamps. That's not terrible. It was a forest. Okay, he couldn't flip it. I would have liked to get rid of the analyst, but I feel like I had to do that. Dax for 4-4 four, four Vigilance. Okay. I and mean, we're at 15. We're pretty healthy. No combat trick. That's good for us. Another innocuous rat or another ragged playmate? I mean, the ragged playmates are going to add up. And a vicious clown. Okay, nice. Cool. Okay, so we're now threatening for four a turn, which isn't terrible. Yeah, this is the most value I've ever gotten out of Horde Caller. He draws a land. That's great. Equip your machete. And he's just going to pass. Okay. So now I'm attacking for five a turn. So I'm on a three turn clock. Don't draw a real card. Don't draw a real card. It's a land. Yes, sir. We love our opponent seeing lands. Okay. Into a final vengeance. Yes, sir. Well, let's just go ahead and do what we're doing. If I out this token, though, that is a lot of damage. Yeah, maybe I should just out that token. 
and they would just go in here. It accelerates the clock. I'd rather risk it for the biscuit. Let's go. All right. Well, he could have blocked a 4-4, four -four, but he decided not to, so we get the W. Turns out, as long as you keep drawing sacrifice enablers, it doesn't matter if you miss play, boys. Match number two, and we're starting off on the play. Let's go. I believe in the sack, baby. Dang, this hand would be insane if I had two lands. But unfortunately, I don't, so I'm gonna have to maul. This hand just has too many lands, and just like, it's just bad. I mean, I think I have to keep. I only have 16 lands, like, yeah. I mean, turn one, I play the Razor Trap Gorge, I guess. I don't think I can win with a five land hand. Okay, he's also playing red. That's scary. He's playing red, but he actually drew his two, his ones and twos. This is unfair. Red, white. Okay. No, he has the more premium aggro deck. No. Okay, I draw a piggy bank. That's actually kind of based. Do we trade banks? Trade banks. Yeah, he might just have like a scorching dragon fire to get rid of mine. I'm going to do it. Him getting a treasure just seems better than us getting a treasure. Yeah, because if he's playing a top land, him getting a treasure would have been huge. Gets him for the one. I play the Conductive Machete. Would have loved to just not draw a land, but okay. Machete. Into a baller card. Okay. I mean, that is better to flip in than not flipping in anything. Hmm. Diversion Specialist is actually pretty good in this deck. Well, let's do this. We can hold this up. Because I have that, I feel a little bit more inclined to maybe attack here. I mean, I don't really want to block with my, my dude. I have one blocker, so. I can gain some life, so it is probably better to uh, race here. If he's putting the Glimmer Light on his Percussionist... Okay, he's not. Yeah. That was perfect for him right here. Piggy bank. Okay. I wish you would sack the glimmer, sir. Okay. Sure. I shall allow it. And then let's do this. Damn, there were so many good things we could rip. If I don't attack with this, it's a 4-4. I guess at least my equipment is better than his, but, you know, he can stack things, like, with a Diversion Specialist, which is stupid. Hopefully he doesn't have a turn inside out. Oh, it has Menace. I didn't realize that. I'm stupid. And he's playing a Land Cycler? That's weird. Why are you playing a Land Cycler in an aggro deck? I think we're just cooked, yeah. I don't want to show him any more of my cards. All right, well, that first game was quite unlucky. Hopefully, we can do a little bit better here. I mean, turn one percussionist, turn two playmate on the draw, on the play. That's just good. I might have to use my saw, though. Draw land here. Not a land, but it's a disturbing mirth. I probably do need a disturbing mirth to, like, draw cards. But I guess I could do that next turn. Yeah, so we Ragged Playmate, and then next turn we can Disturbing Mirth to get a land. Sack the Percussionist. Double Black. He's got an Innocuous Rat. Okay. Not a land, so I have to do this. We get three draws here to find a land. I mean, that's a land. So we'll throw that down and just go in here. And he's going to take it. Okay, so maybe he has a sacrifice synergy here. If we need to, we could use the saw to sacrifice disturbing mirth. Oh, he's not another rat. Wow. Well, exiling one of those would be pretty big. No land on the draw. He's sitting at two lands and he's playing a three color deck. That's really good for us. Okay. And we hit our land drop. I kind of just want a double two drop. I could get the value back later with my turn inside out, but I just need to clear up spaces. Like I'm going to have to answer those at some point. And they're really not worth a removal.
Yeah, let's just go double two drop. I think it's more of a tempo swing here. Like I said, if we need to, we can go saw, but that's probably like two turns from now. If we draw a lane, I can go Razorkin Horde Caller, which isn't terrible. He's plane cycling? Okay. Okay, we draw a land. That's actually huge. Wow. Well, I guess we just play this and have him trade away both of his guys. I mean, I like that a lot. Everyone, get the in there. Do I want to attack with this? Yeah, I mean, if he's giving me a two for one, I'm in on that all day. He trades with the piggy bank? Interesting. That was a weird one. Unidentified hovership, okay. Well, I guess if he has a removal here, I instant in our turn inside out. But this also might just set up lethal, right? Because I could unblockable ragged playmate on my gremlin, and then I'm just hitting for four damage. So he's flipping up another innocuous rat, okay. And then he's going to go sacrifice kill, sure. Since it exile is, I don't get this effect, right? Yeah, I don't, okay. A little bit unfortunate. He's just going to pass, cool. Okay, that's a good top deck. Because I have six mana, so I could equip the Saw, Attack, Manifest Dread. That seems huge. Okay. We do that. We play the Saw. The Table Saw is coming in, brother. Believe in the Saw. The Saw is real. So we're going to equip here. And then we attack with both. Activate effect. I'm going to sack this. Yeah, the fact you can sack any permanent is really, really nice. And we get to draw? Wow. Okay, I'm going to turn that in. That's great. Yeah, that might just be confirmed lethal because that guarantees us uh, damage no matter what. Wow, Saw is actually kind of a decent card as long as you have a good setup for it. I thought that might be true, but like the data shows it's bad. And that's why you can't trust the data, especially early. Because people will put a, a card that's like good in one specific situation in every deck. And it'll skew the data. And that's what's looking like right now. Okay, so the, yeah, this is just confirmed game, right? Attack with everyone and then I just turn inside out. Yeah, because I don't want to show him my other stuff, right? I mean, he's going to know that card anyway. I might as well not show him this, right? Yeah, because that's confirmed. GG's, brother. Let's go. Dude, if we drew just all red land from this point on, this hand would be insane. It's really sad I have to mull this. Like, this is just too dangerous. All right, my lord and savior, Jesus Christ, give me your strength. I guess this isn't as risky, but it's still pretty risk. I should probably put back a mountain. Piggy bank could get us into the machete. Ooh, he has the Osseous stick wiser. That card's irritating. Oh, and we get a black. That's huge. Let's go. Actually huge. Hopefully he's willing to trade. If he is, this is a huge tempo swing in our favor. Please trade, sir. Please trade. No. You, daddy bastard, you. That guy's a certified dirty bastard. Certified D-I-R-T-Y dirty bastard. Well, I got to turbo, uh, turbo out this machete. Believe in the machete, baby. Believe in the machete. Okay. Hopefully we draw another black. If we draw another black, this is huge. Because then I can sack the innocuous rat. No, he has a midnight mayhem. Why do you have that, bro? Why? That's so annoying, bro. Why do you have that? I mean, he's at 27. That's pretty disgusting. I have to just play this and pass, I guess. You know what I just realized? Putting the machete or the saw on innocuous rat is actually really obnoxious. Like, because the only reason this card is fair is because it's 1-1. One, one. Making it anything more than that is just insane. At least I can exile his stick weaver, which is becoming very annoying really quickly. Top deck of black land, top deck of black land. Can I be that guy? Can I be Himothy? Do you have another vengeance? He has another one. No. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. He's only attacking with the 2-2. Two -two. Okay. Well, I'm not blocking that. Brother, why can I not top deck the correct cord? Okay, well, I have to do this. Okay. Well, that's like a real guy I can actually flip. 
and just like sack. I need a land so bad. If I had drawn a land, we would be back in this game. But the fact he's at 30 just gives me anxiety. Gets him for one damage. Okay. I already know you're not instant anything in. Like that would just be bad, bro. Okay. Wow. He act that actually just helped us. We're now below 13. That is so funny. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. It costs four to equip the machete though. I should probably just take some damage here. I'm just going to hold my interaction at this point. And we'll get in with this guy. Because I actually, like, don't want to block with him. Yay, I'm almost putting you back to your starting health total. What's funny is this guy was actually in a position to play the white ley line. Imagine if he did that and gave all of his guys plus two, plus two. I would have no other choice to auto-concede out of respect. Because that would just be clout. Like, first person to actually trigger the plus two, plus two with the white ley line, I'm quitting out. Mark my words. If I lie, I give you the right to unsubscribe. But I never lie because I'm a man of God. And that's why we're going to win this battle. Boiler Bygles, sir. Why must you do this to me, sir? That is OP, sir. Why are you doing this? Okay. I mean, sure. That's really unfortunate, but okay. I mean, I might as well just do this. I could just sack and kill that, but probably not. I'm just going to hold the line. I hold the line. Hopefully this winter's intervention can save my ass. Another innocuous rat, you dirty bastard. I need to draw fodder. Give me a disturbing mirth. Father, please lend me your strength. I need to disturb me mirth this guy right now. Okay. I mean, that's a card. Just go ragged playmate. I will winter's intervention here. If I just sack this, I don't know that I can aggro him out. I'm hitting for six. He hits me for three on the crackback. Yeah, he might just get something bigger. I don't know. I also have things that are just like really good sack fodder. We'll see what we draw next turn. If we draw dead, I will just get rid of his bygles and just go in, but he could play something even better. Does he attack for the one? That'd be huge. He's not. Okay. Ooh, that's nice. That's so nice, actually. Wow. That's actually so nice. Drop down the skin ripper. I could just sack and pop his gremlin during his end step. Nah, I just want to get rid of this. Please, no instant combat trick. Please hit dead here. Hit dead here. I'll allow it. End step. Beep. Gotcha, bitch. Let's go. No, he actually flipped into a real card. Are you kidding me? Why does this guy get to flip into a real card? Judge, judge. I need to draw a sack fodder so bad. Can I have an innocuous rat? We can take turns. I'll draw one, then you draw one. It's just going to be way more advantageous for me. Sure. Okay. I take. Please draw dead. Please draw dead. Yes. Oh my gosh. Why? I mean, I'm not double sacking. That's just stupid. The MVS is viable. He is viable indeed right now. I wish I could sack the machete so bad. Machete should be sackable. If he has a response, I can double sack. He's going to kill both. Please do not roll into a real creature. No, he actually has a land cycler. Are you kidding me? Why, bro? Why do you have that? That's actually so toxic. We lost to a person with a land cycler. Well, that's an achievement in itself, I guess. I felt like this deck was really good, but game one, unfortunate hand just really shut us down. But this deck's still hella cool. All right, it's time for the final boss. Can we recoup our losses and rack sack our opponent? It's unfortunate that we've started off on the draw every game. Wow. Yeah, we're getting land screwed here. We got a mole. This hand is still kind of slow and bad because I have this tap land. But the tap land has been better than worse because we do have double pipped cards and I'm going 16 land, so I don't mind it. I think given the way that this hand will play out, turn two, I play this, then turn three, I do this. It's either this or this. Yeah, I'm just going to keep the winter's intervention, I guess. Maybe we'll just uh, top deck a mountain. Ah, uh, it's a black. Okay. Flesh Burrower. Nice, man. Okay. We'll go with the innocuous rat here. 
Well, considering he played a Flesh Brewer, I'm more glad that I kept the Winner's Intervention than not. Hopefully, he'll play a, a good 3-drop that's worth hitting with the Final Vengeance. Oh, yeah, that's totally worth it to kill with the Final Vengeance. Yeah, uh, I am so glad I have this interaction. So, we're going to exile that. That's a Mythic Rare. Don't even need to read it. Mythic Rares are OP. Rule number one of Duskmore Draft, Mythic Rares are indeed OP. Answer them often and answer them efficiently. And then we're going to Winner's Intervention. Yes, sir. Nice little tempo swing in our favor, but can we pull it off? I don't know. If we get another land, I can just play out the machete. Are you just going to kill that? Okay. Ooh, okay. That's unfortunate. I don't have anything to sack, so this is like just a really bad situation. I need to land so bad here. Another red source would actually just fix so many issues we had. Bale Merc Leech. Okay. No, where are the red sources? Why? All right, let's find a red source here. Red source on me, red source on three, red source. Boop. Wombo combo, that ain't Falco. That's a red source, baby. Okay. That's kind of nice. Well, okay, so I can do this next turn. I'd rather just use all my mana. He's gonna murder that. Okay, that seems really hasty, dude. I still have three cards in hand. I just drew three cards. That was incredibly hasty of you, dude. And he's just gonna pass? All right. Well, I wish this was a red, but I guess that's fine. We'll play this because we're gonna lose it, and then I guess I just go machete. Unless he just, for some reason, shotguns another murder. This guy seems to really like doing that. Okay, it goes through. Get our free damage in, play the machete. I have been drastically surprised by how many decent equipments there have been in this set, because equipments are usually just trash. Well, we're going to get this, obviously. Like, we just don't want our opponent knowing that we have a bomb in best two out of three. And still to this day, I've never gotten to cast this card. I'm sure he's going to instant speed murder again. Oh, nice. He instant speed murdered. Good play, buddy. Good play. Gets in with the Bale Merc Leech. This guy... Might as well have a license to own a shotgun, because that's what he's doing. I don't know. If I do this, I can play both my cards. Feel the fear of being hunted, sir. You don't have a fourth removal spell in a row. You're not that guy. He's not that guy. Let's go. Gotcha, bitch. I'm sorry, buddy. You shouldn't have shotgunned all of your removal. Well, I think I'm just ahead in the race, so I'd rather just keep my rat... Yeah, there's no way this guy's going to beat us. Oh, baby, that was so hot. That was literally so hot. GG's, brother. GG's. The hype is real. Innocuous rat does it again. Boom. Oh, that puts him at one? I thought he was dead. I'm stupid. Hold up. Wait a minute. Okay, he's dead anyway. Something Let's go. Right. Let's go. Something ain't right. It was, it was a delayed kill. It's like when you're in an MMA match and you kick someone in the liver. And they run at you and throw a punch and then fall on the ground because they had the delayed liver shot. Okay, let's try this again. Let me actually do the Walt of Rage one time for the content and a second time for the culture. Okay, we're just the king of opening these one land, no land hands uh, in this run today. So I guess let's try again. This hand is insane. I don't even have to tell you. This hand is just insane. Wow, okay. Yeah, I kind of just want to play Disturbing Mirth on turn three. And I think MVS is just more important. Fear of being hunted is kind of awkward on the draw. Okay, drop down our dual land. Hopefully, we draw another land here. But if not, I'll get to draw uh, two cards off the Disturbing Mirth anyway. He's got a Flesh Burwer once again. The standard classic play. Drop down the rat. I got this, guys. I got this. Don't worry. Rats. Rats from the bay. Believe in the rat. I love that there's rats in this set. Rat is my favorite archetype, if you did not know. Longtime viewers of the channel know me as the Rat King. Please do not exile my rat, sir. I have no other plays in my hand. Please do not do that to me, sir. I would never do that to you, sir. Because I'm not going to shotgun my murders on a 1-1. One -one. That's just bad. Not doing that, buddy. Bale Merc Leech. Okay, cool. Well, that gives us a little bit of insurance here. So we got to throw this down and hope to draw a actual land here. I believe. Believers in the chat, show me the land. 1-2. Okay, it's a land. Not the land I would prefer, but it is a land. Ooh, that's a good card. Okay, we rolled into a good card. I can't be that upset. If we draw another land next turn, I I'm just the GOAT. It is what it is. I think I'm just going to take all this damage. 
Like, this card's just too valuable, right? I have a way to heal anyway, so. No, I needed to draw a land here. Why? Why must you do this to me, game? Why? So, I'm gonna play the Percussionist, I guess. And I'm going to just attack. Get in there. And you know what? Maybe I'm actually just gonna play Piggy Bank. Yeah, I think Piggy Bank is a little bit better because it's gonna give us a treasure, which means no matter what, we're actually going to be able to do things next turn, which is huge. Yeah, I really like attacking there. I think like no matter the fact that he has drain, like we're just gonna beat this guy in a race. Our deck is just way better situated to race. I do have multiple things for a sack fodder here. So if we draw land, we're in a huge position here. Sweet. Get that boy out of the way. Nice, no longer death touchy. No death touchy, sir. Oh my gosh, it's a land. Johnny, the land jit, has done it again, boys. How do we feel about going in with everybody and then just, like, dropping this? He could also have a murder. Yeah, let's just go in. This is instant speed, so this isn't terrible. We'll see. Does he have it? I don't really care about the damage. He doesn't have it. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty nice. So if he attacks, I just sack, manifest dread, and then get a 4-3. Would you like to attack, sir? I would like for you to attack. He's just passing? Cool. Good deals. Get this out of the way. And it's two lands that I desperately needed. You hate to see it. No, it's not a land. Why? Okay, well, obviously I'm going to do this. Boop. What is this guy holding in his hand? Get in there. He's taking it all. Bro, what is your hand? Are you, like, bricked up? If this guy is a damnation, that would be crazy. I haven't played against someone who's had that yet, but I do know that is in the format on the bonus sheet. I'm going to give him a good old rats from the bay. No, why? I, I need to remove this emo from my uh, track. Every time I click the rats emo, it always gives me that gay shit. Fuck out of here with that. Rats from the bay. Gotcha, bitch. Yeah, when you give your opponent a rats from the bay, the, uh, the other person just can't come back because I have rat priority. I can hold rat priority until my opponent uh, cries tears of salt and defeat. Yeah, he's going to crack Tears of Salt. He's obviously roping. Sorry about you, bitch. Let's go. <laughs> the boat. Back at it again with another rack sack victory. Man, that would have felt so sweet if we went 3-0, but that's fine. I had a lot of fun with this one, and I'm really liking this stack. To be honest, I think this is my favorite deck in the format. And even though you can't really go into it that often... It is just so enjoyable and rewarding when you can because the gameplay, it just feels like you have so much agency. Let's do a quick little review of the deck before we end the video. So obviously we had the Waltz of Rage, which we never saw, and the Screaming Nemesis, which we never actually saw. We had a face down, we never got to do anything. And we had a Skin Ripper and two Disturbing Mirth. I think the highlights of this deck are actually not the rares. Machete was amazing, and I think this card's just great in every deck. Skin Ripper was cracked, because if your opponent doesn't kill it immediately, you just get so far ahead. And especially with Disturbing Mirth, this card is the nuts. This is the number one reason you should be going into this deck, and I legitimately don't think that you should try to play this archetype if you're not seeing Disturbing Mirth. Now, I will say this card has been going pretty late, so if you're getting one of these pick five, pick six... I'm latching onto that all day, and there's very few things you can do to um, get this archetype out of my hands. Now, one that was not so obvious to me was Innocuous Rat. I knew this card was decent, but this draft was a great example of like an optimal ratio of cards that are good sacrifice fodder and cards that are good um, sacrifice enablers. And Innocuous Rat really helped us meet that quota because we had a total of three, four, five, six, seven cards that uh, we actually wanted to sack and generate additional value from doing so. And then we also had three, four, five, six cards that allow us to sack things. And so I think that's really close to where you would like to be. Obviously, it's better to have more um, things that are good at being sacrificed than vice versa. But this was pretty close to optimal and with a little bit of a better draw in that second match, we totally could have trophied. And if you guys have not checked out this deck, I definitely recommend it because in my opinion, this is the most fun I've had in the format 
um, it's just really difficult to get into because you need this card um, in your deck, at least one, hopefully more, in order to have an awesome draft. You know, unless you just have good red rares. But at that point, there's some drafts where it's like your deck is just 80% red and you have this other color. And it's like, oh yeah, I had an insane red black deck. It's like, no, you didn't. Red is just the best color in the format, undoubtedly. And you just had all the good aggressive red cards, which is exactly why red, white, and red, black are such high performing decks red black a little bit less so because people aren't really fully understanding when you should go into this deck and misusing some of the cards but still like the better red white and red black aggro decks which are the predominant aggro decks in the format are compiled of majority red cards versus black cards two other things that i learned from this draft is that winter's intervention i think is just more often better than not in an aggro deck in a controlling deck kind of so-so i've just realized this card is best situated to go against another aggro player and it really overperforms when you're also the aggro player and you and your opponent are trying to race and they think they're ahead in the race but the two life makes all the difference and I didn't think this card was going to be as good because I felt like two twos just don't matter that much. But it does just allow you to attack with more of your guys, especially whenever red has a lot of menace creatures. That is very nice. But this is definitely not the most premium. Final Vengeance. This was actually like the highest ceiling I've ever seen this card get. Like most of the time you're playing this card because you didn't get the more premium stuff like Scorching Dragonfire or or the two mana enchantment that gives your opponent minus three, minus three. But this is actually, I think, the preferred removal spell um, in our deck specifically because of how much we benefit from sacrificing things and just only having to pay one mana. Because this card allowed us to double spell on so many turns where any other piece of interaction would not have let us do so. And then Saw, I actually just thought before this draft this is a card you never wanted to play but i actually think there is a time and place to use this card and the data shows that not many people are using it and that it's not very good and i would beg to differ because this card is honestly amazing once you already have a good red black deck like once you have a couple disturbing mirth this card is something that i'm willing to play as a one of just because like in this deck as you can see we went 16 lands and this card can allow you to um draw cards in the late game once you've ran out of gas and the plus two attack really matters when you have a bunch of creatures like rat and percussionist that are weenies that benefit from them dying because you can make them big enough to where your opponent has to interact with them and i think there's something to be said about uh the value of this card in those situations so definitely keep your mind open when you see this it's not great in most decks but i do think there is a real place for this and you should be aware of it if you want to perform at your all-time best in this format but man this was awesome and I'm glad I got to showcase it on the channel and I hope to eventually showcase a 3-0 red black deck at some point because I am just loving this deck and I cannot get enough but thank you guys so much for getting this far in the video and if you want to see more awesome Duskmorn draft content make sure to smash the like button turn post notifications on and subscribe to the channel so you never miss another banger and as always if it's not the goo it's got to go peace Is that indigo?